Hey guys, and welcome to Upfront Games bonus content for the month of March. So, um, we we're kind of going back and forth on what to do for this video, being that there isn't really a whole lot extra when it comes to PS5, Xbox Anaconda, Lockhart, and Maverick. So, um, instead of going into those, my hair's all messed up. Anyway, instead of going into those today, um, there was a very uh, recent release in reference to Google, so I figured we would discuss that instead, uh, being that they are going to be coming into the uh, gaming realm here in the very near future. So let's get into it. Um, Google held a press conference at GDC this year. Uh, and there was a lot of information, so I'm just going to dig into some pieces of it, um, put a few opinions out there uh, as part of, you know, what I'm seeing and, and noticing throughout the press conference. So let's just jump into it because this is going to be a little bit longer than our weekly video uh, that we also dropped, so you can check that out. Um, okay, so... The biggest thing that I think was noticed right away was the fact that it isn't a console. Um, there is a a uh, stick that you can purchase uh, that will go with a wireless controller to play off of a TV, but we'll get into that here in just a minute. So there was a test done with Stadia uh, last year that basically streamed Assassin's Creed Odyssey uh, over a browser and it actually worked really well. I was amazed. Um, however, um, let's just jump into the points and then we'll discuss more of this as we go. So um, again, no console. It's it's a uh, like a dongle stick that you can purchase uh, and we'll get into exactly what that is here in a minute. Um, so Ubisoft is definitely partnering uh, with Google for Stadia as they have also partnered with uh, Sony and Xbox as well. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be something that they'll just basically offer uh, their game titles to Stadia as well as Sony, um, Xbox, and Nintendo. So uh, there was there's a quick play option that was shown off. Um, it's in a browser. It has very little load time. It's up to five seconds. Um, there's no downloads, no patches. So that's very appealing in itself um, because I don't know about you, but I do get kind of frustrated with the loading and uh, installing of games as they're purchased. Um, like the Division 2, when I purchased it, it took a little bit to um, get it fully downloaded to be able to play the game. Uh, which does kind of suck. Uh, but I would hope that PS5 and the new Xbox consoles are going to improve upon that as well. Um, instant, instant experience at launch across TV, phone, PC, laptop, and tablets. Uh, again, the only thing that you need the, uh, the stream dongle for is the TV. And that is called a Chromecast Streamer that can be purchased, um, essentially plug it into your TV and it adds the functionality and then you plug in your USB controller and you're off to the races. Um, the Stadia controller looks like a cross between the Xbox and PS4 controller. No surprise there because ergonomically they work. Um, they're comfortable for players. So that just kind of makes sense. Um, there's a capture to share and save to YouTube button that is added to the controller. So instead of uh, the likes of PlayStation, um, you have a four button option instead of two, uh, where we now have uh, the two buttons on the side of the center pad within the PS4 controller. You now have a center button and four option buttons outside of that. Um, so the capture to share and save to YouTube is one of them that's that can be set up to share for yourself um, or to actually stream the content directly. Google Assistant 
is there as well. That's another button you won't recognize from another controller. And that's actually for help with in-game content. It actually looked really nice when they showed this off because um, if I get stuck in something that I'm, I've am i been working on for a long time and just can't figure it out, I'm generally going to my computer, typing in YouTube or what have you to figure out why I'm why I'm stuck or what I'm missing. Um, with Google Assistant, you can simply ask the question about the game's content, and then the video that's most related to that area in the game will pop up, and you'll be able to play it directly within the game. So you just reference what you need to reference, close the video, and return. So that's kind of a cool feature as well. Um, it is entirely cloud-based. There's data, center, data centers um, around the globe in 200 plus countries, 7,500 plus edge nodes to deliver the, those games. Um, at launch, it'll support 4K, 60 frames per second, HDR, and surround sound. Um, in the future, it's obviously 8K scalable because that is the direction that the industry seems to be going. Um, Saves are at a high quality, so if you're playing a game and you're going to save it, your save is going to be at 4K, 60 frames per second, HDR, as well as your playthrough. So that's kind of interesting, um, but that way you can call it up without having to graphically enhance it uh, to meet that quality or criteria. Um, AMD, or here's the, here's the uh, specs. Uh, that they've issued out per um, run of Stadia. Um, AMD custom GPU at 10.7 teraflops. Now, this was taunted because, well, in a way it was taunted that it's currently obviously going to be the best one when it comes to that, beating out both PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X. Uh, at 6.0 and 4.2 teraflops, uh, respectfully. However, this does not account for PS5, Xbox, um, Anaconda, Lockhart, Maverick. So, um, it helps with the sailing point with when they're going to be available. However, I wouldn't put too much stake in that being the highest contender for long. Um, anyway, 56 compute units and a HBM2 memory is currently part of the GPU. Now the CPU is a custom x86 processor, 2.7 gigahertz, hyper-threaded AVX2 with a memory of 16 gigs of total RAM, up to 484 gigabyte, gigabytes per second transfer speed, L2, L3 cache of 9.5 five megabytes so it definitely does have a, a powerhouse of sorts built in um, but then again these are all being ran from data centers that have a multitude of computing ability at their fingertips um, so I mean it can always be scaled up scaled down which might be very appealing when it comes to the market itself however the question still lies in who are they going to have available. We know that Ubisoft is going to be available, but what we don't know is who else. I know a few other names came up and I'll touch on those as I continue, but nothing that is prime at this point other than Ubisoft. Um, and that's just because they have a solid uh, partnership already and they will continue that and they have great games. Um, there are some other great game developers that are involved, but not necessarily the ones that you'd see um, working on first party exclusives. So let's um, dig a little bit deeper. Um, it is based on the Linux OS, Unreal Game Engine and Unity, Havoc's phys Physics Engine, and there's a multitude of other hardware uh, developers that are going to be a part of this as well. Um, they did show at a point in the conference about 20 to 25 different um, hardware suppliers that are going to be partnering with Google for Stadia. Um, so 
beyond that, another software developer that was uh, there as well was id software we're going to be doing doom eternal 4k 60 frames per second with stadia they didn't really talk too much about anything else going forward um, but they did highlight doom eternal for stadia being currently developed and ran on that show floor so um that's a that's a plus in a way um, but I, I'd imagine they're also going to bring Doom Eternal to the other platforms. And depending on when it releases, it may be something that releases on the new consoles as well. Um, they are allowing full cross-platform play with PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo, which is great. However, is every one of those companies going to bite off on allowing that cross-platform play? We all know that Microsoft will. They're already in cross-platform talks with Nintendo. However, whether or not Sony will, that's uh, yet to be seen. Another developer that was brought in was Tangent. Um, they were just briefly mentioned as far as being able to, or being... Uh, developing for Stadia, um, however, nothing specific. Um, Stream Connect is what uh, Google Stadia is going to use um, to do split screen multiplayer on a couch session, which is actually pretty cool. Um, you can log into multiple accounts and play the game together on the same screen. Um, Another developer that was brought up was Tequila Works. They were behind Rhyme. Um, if anybody played that game, they're actually going to be looking at developing for Stadia as well. Uh, Crowdplay is going to be an option where essentially if you're looking at a YouTube uh, video of someone playing a game or a streamer, you can simply click play and join that game seamlessly. This is also going to be regulated by the YouTuber um, or the content creator as far as how that's going to work within their channel. But you do have that as an option. It'll be join next game, etc. And you'll be allowed in and be able to play with your uh, favorite streamer, etc. Um, Stadia Games and Entertainment is going to be their first party studio. Uh, they're definitely um, very forward about involving as many people as they can and making their first party games very appealing. However, there's nothing that's been said in reference to what that means just yet. Um, they are doing a 2019 launch, so you can look for that this year if it's something you're interested in. I'll admit, graphically, it looks really good. However, um, I've yet to see any titles or anything that's impressed me to the point that I might want to buy it. Um, but with a 2019 launch and a summer event, they haven't really stated what that's going to consist of or when that's going to be. Uh, they did say that that's going to be when you're going to get a, a view of what games are going to be released uh, for this year. Um, so if you're interested and Stadia looks good to, good to you, something you might take a chance on, um, then look out for that. And we'll definitely cover that as we get into the summer. Um, also, um, when it comes down to it, there's always going to be a balance of pricing and whatnot as well. Right now, pricing hasn't been released on any of this. So I don't know about you, but I like to play on my TV. Um, so for me, I'm really curious to see what the Chrome uh, Chromecast streaming device is going to cost, uh, as well as the uh, the Stadia controller. So um, we'll see kind of what they plan on doing. I'm sure all the pricing will be released either closer to or during the summer event. And we'll definitely be looking that over and releasing that information as soon as we have it. So um, that was it. I hope 
that you guys enjoyed the coverage. And again, any questions, comments, concerns on the Stadia release, let us know. And we'll talk to you soon. And thank you.